So hello my friends, Devon Lennox here, Photography PX. In today's video, we'll cover the best medium format cameras. Do know you can find timestamps and links in the description down below. And also know this is not a sponsored video. Let's get started. There was a day that medium format or shorthand MF cameras used to cost as much as a down payment on a three bedroom house. And while those days aren't thoroughly over, things today have changed for the better. Manufacturers like Pentax, Hasselblad, and recently Fujifilm have all inspired a change. And these days, medium format cameras are supremely more accessible, versatile, and flexible than their film counterparts. Instead, today's options are more compact and finally conceivable for handheld work. Some photographers indeed scold this particular niche, though arguing it's too expensive and still inaccessible. But medium format simply delivers unparalleled detail, quality, and dynamic range, and it remains the pinnacle of photography. And it's still currently unmatched amongst the 35mm crowd, with the exceptions being Canon's EOS R5, Sony's A7R4, and Sony's A1. Even so, when it comes to ultimate image quality, these cameras continue to remain outperformed, namely in color rendering, bit depth, and signal to noise. And it's no question why professionals in our industry naturally gravitate towards this niche. Thankfully, medium format can significantly expand our creative horizons and unlock our true photographic abilities. And while pricey, they're the next logical evolution for many photographers. Unfortunately though, medium format isn't cheap and it's essential to understand each option's capabilities thoroughly and whether it's actually worthwhile. So to aid in that quest and to narrow the search, we've compiled a list of the best medium format cameras on the present market. Coming in number five, Leica's S3. Released in 2020, the S3 is Leica's fourth generation medium format camera to continue the revolution first started by the original S2. It features a 64 megapixel CMOS sensor and the Maestro 2 image processor. It also has a three inch screen, a top deck LCD, weather sealing, dual card slots, built-in GPS, wireless connectivity, and it shoots video at 8-bit 422 Cinema 4K 24p. With this update, not only does the new model sport a brand new 64 megapixel sensor, but it also does so with better image quality to boot. In this case, it offers 41% more resolution than the outgoing Type 007's 37.5 megapixel sensor, yet Leica engineers have managed to maintain an incredible 15 stops of dynamic range while improving low-light performance and tonal rendering in the process, and it now even boasts two stops of extra latitude in ISO, offering a native ISO range of a whopping 50,000. Together, photographers have enormous latitude for capturing in-camera HDR images through a single exposure, merely expose for the highlights in the scene and recover all the remaining details in post-processing. The S3 also houses some much needed improvements, namely it has a refined color filter array, which yields more faithful and true to life skin tones and reproduction of red hues, great for commercial applications. And the sensor's cooling is also improved, so now you can shoot eight minute long exposures without overheating due to its dual gain design. Overall, Leica's S3 represents the pinnacle of engineering from the firm. They've made meaningful improvements to the already excellent Type 007's image quality, making it their best camera to date. So if you want the best the company provides, fortunately, this is it. Coming in number four, Hasselblad's X1D Mark II 50C. Released in 2019, Hasselblad's X1D Mark II enhances its predecessor with meaningful user improvements. It features a 50 megapixel CMOS sensor and a 3.6 inch touchscreen. It also has weather sealing, built in GPS, dual card slots, USB charging, wireless connectivity, and it shoots 8 bit 420 2.7K 30p video. The X1D Mark II obtains its predecessor's 50 megapixel sensor, capturing 16 bit raw images with 14 stops of dynamic range. Even so, this configuration remains a proven strength for this lineup, and instead it brings notable improvements to the overall user experience. Namely, it refines the award-winning design of the first generation with even more seamless functionality and handling, and it does so with a surprisingly compact design as Hasselblad X system lenses feature a built-in shutter unit. 
As such, it makes medium format supremely compact and more portable than some full frame options on the market today. Other improvements include an updated EVF, better startup times, and a refined user interface. Together, these updates make the X1D Mark II a noticeably smoother experience. And overall, as a follow-up to the first ever mirrorless medium format camera, the X1D Mark II 50C continues refining the line and it brilliantly delivers the lifelike and fine image quality the company is renowned for in the industry, yet it does so while making a powerful design statement to boot. Coming in number three, Pentax's 645Z. Released in 2014, Pentax's 645Z refined the industry-changing 645D with better functionality and a decidedly lower MSRP, and it dominated the market following its release, standing free of any competition. It features a 51.4 megapixel CMOS sensor and the Prime 3 image processor. It also has a 3.2-inch tilting screen, a status LCD, weather sealing, dual card slots, time-lapse, multi-exposure, and it records 1080p 30 p or 60i videos with this update pentax has done away with its predecessor's ccd sensor instead of opting for a cmos but they've also increased the resolution 28 percent from 40 to 51 megapixels but crucially at its current price the 645z is one of the few options in its category that's genuinely affordable, grossly undercutting the brand new 50 megapixel Sony A1. And since its release, its impact amongst the medium format crowd has been surely felt. With several manufacturers following suit with more affordable offerings, Pentax being a long-standing manufacturer in this space also has a fully fleshed lens collection. Currently, they offer 20 plus lenses for the 645 mount, not to mention adapters for older generation lenses lenses as well. Thus, it's a much more mature system than rivals. The 645Z also includes a helpful tilting screen and dual tripod threads to switch from landscape to portrait orientations easily, both increasing its versatility. Overall, despite the apparent price, Pentax's 645Z is an affordable way for photographers to acquire the power of medium format. And as the first camera to pioneer this particular trend in a relatively new market, it makes sense why. Coming in at number two, Fujifilm's GFX 100S. Released in 2021, Fujifilm's GFX 100S is the latest medium format option to hit the market. It features a 102 megapixel CMOS sensor and the X processor 4. It also has a 3.2 inch three-way tilting touchscreen, a top status LCD, weather sealing, and body stabilization, dual card slots, wireless connectivity, and it shoots 10-bit 4K 30p videos. The GFX 100S obtains a sophisticated 425 point AF system with face and eye detection, making well suited for portraiture and this configuration remains a key advantage over most rivals in the segment mostly lacking these capabilities it also obtains the pixel shift multi-shot mode which creates images with 400 megapixels of detail but if that's too much you can also capture 100 megapixel 16-bit images with exceptional dynamic range and outstanding sharpness interestingly though the gfx 100s can also capture 10-bit log footage as well as 12-bit prores raw and this combination combination makes it currently unmatched as a hybrid in this segment, ideally suited for video production. Overall, Fujifilm's GFX 100S redefines traditional medium format and strategically expands the existing GFX lineup, and it's an excellent option for those wanting the most powerful hybrid, that is, until the GFX 50S Mark II arrives. Coming at number one, Fujifilm's GFX 50S. Released in 2017, Fujifilm's GFX 50S refines the X-H1 in many ways, but it's a release that revolutionized the segment and altered our expectations. It features a 51.4 megapixel CMOS sensor and the X Processor Pro. It also has a 3.2 inch three-way touchscreen, a top status LCD, weather sealing, dual card slots, multiple exposures, time-lapse, wireless connectivity, and it records 1080p 30p videos. The GFX 50S is a unique medium format option that delivers a compact modular design closely matching the X-H1 flagship in dimensions. As such, compared to rivals, the system becomes distinctly portable and better suited for handheld work, yet it still delivers high-end 14-bit raw images with a wide 14-stop dynamic range and excellent signal to noise, and it captures those images using a similar 425-point AF system as the higher-end GFX 100S to boot. 
However, it houses the unique option that is a removable EVF. And you can also pair the EVF with a tilt adapter to improve its working angles. Additionally, unlike the GFX100S, it houses dedicated top mounted dials to control shutter speed and ISO, giving photographers immediate access to change exposure settings. Overall, Fujifilm's GFX50S becomes the most approachable means for photographers to acquire medium format, and it's currently the most affordable new entry into the space, which is perfect for those wanting to test the waters firsthand. Even so, it's a doubly capable option for landscape or commercial photographers wanting to travel light but maintain insane power all the while. So there you have it, my friends. There's our list of the best medium format cameras. For more information, check out our website, photographypx.com. I've been your host, Devon Lennox. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope you found the contents of today's video insightful and it added value to you. If you're new here, please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. Let us know if we overlook something or we missed something that we covered in today's video. I've been your host, Devon Lennox, photography. <laughs>